Robbie Williams Rewind. Welcome to Robbie Williams Rewind. We are the champions. I'm Matt. And I'm Lucy. And along with help from special guests, we take you on an in-depth rewind through the solo career of multi-award winning singer, songwriter and entertainer, Robbie Williams. In this episode, we are honoured to welcome a true music icon, musician, composer, arranger and conductor who has worked extensively with Robbie. And that's Steve Sidwell. Hi, Steve. Good evening, folks. How are you? We are very good. Very well. Thank you. Thank good. you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so before we start, um, we'll give our listeners some background on your extensive career. Uh, so coming from a very musical family, Steve studied trumpet, piano, composition and orchestration at the Royal College of Music and the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, where he met Guy Chambers. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. Good. <laughs> yeah. the same Good. thing that's wrong. Fact check. <laughs> yeah, fact, fact correct. <laughs> um, Steve won a Grammy in 2015 for the cast album of Beautiful, the Carol King musical, which he orchestrated on Broadway. He was also nominated for Tony and Olivier Awards for that show. He's also orchestrated Jim Steinsman's Bat Out of Hell and West End shows like Made in Dagenham and We Will Rock You. Steve contributed to film soundtracks including Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge and Romeo and Juliet, Bridget Jones's Diary and Finding Nemo. He composed Elements and Motion for the 79th Academy Awards, which received an Emmy nomination. Other TV credits include arranging and conducting the London Olympic Games Closing Ceremony, the 2015 Rugby World Cup Opening Ceremony and Children in Need Rocks the Albert Hall. Most recently, Steve was musical director for the Concert for Ukraine and the Platinum Party at the Palace for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Wow. <laughs> Steve's worked on many advertising campaigns, including the award-winning Honda Choir ad. He's also worked with loads of international artists like George Michael, Amy Winehouse, Snow Patrol, Lily Allen, Muse, Take That, Tom Jones, Shirley Bassey, Sting, Elton John, Paul McCartney, Mick Jagger, Eric Clapton, Rod Stewart, Stevie Wonder, The Who, Ian Jury, and I'm sure more, Steve. <laughs> and of course, our very own Robbie Williams. And we'll talk through all your work with Robbie throughout the rest of the show. Because that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so what an incredible career. Yeah, I think you know more about me than I do. I can't remember half of those things. <laughs> but uh yes it's um you know it's, it's all been it sounds like it's hectic but it's spread over a, a period of time and and yeah I've, I've been very fortunate with with working with some great people yeah yeah <laughs> so just to give you a little context about us and and the podcast we've been Robbie super fans since the start of his solo career I was I was a take that fan as well and Robbie was always my favorite um we've seen him all over the world met him on a number of occasions chatted with him a lot on his fan app and Instagram live. Uh, he refers to us as the champions. <laughs> um, oh, okay. He recently surprised us on a, a TV pilot um, where he uh, sent a video from LA, uh, which we, he, he said he was aware of the podcast and thanked us for doing it. <laughs> that was oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. That's lovely. Yeah. And our podcast, we cover Robbie's music album by album, B-side by B-side, tour by tour. You know, we dig out all the gems that maybe some people weren't, weren't aware of. And uh, we look at our favorite lyrics and memories of the past 25 years. And we have guest fans on as well, and obviously special guests like yourself who join us for each episode. And they join in the commentary and talk about, you know, why they like Robbie and what are their memories and uh, so far, we've recorded 22 episodes up to Take the Crown album of 2012. So I guess you could say we know Rob quite well and his work. And uh, interestingly enough, shall I say this right now? What? Yeah, can you not? <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> uh, you're going to say. Well, our swing episode oh, yeah. um, is actually one of the most listened to. Um, it is, uh, we get good numbers on all the episodes, but for some reason, the swing episode seems to be a go-to for uh, a lot of people um hopefully they listen to our other other episodes as well <laughs> yeah. but they really love the swing episode so <laughs> yeah that's just something about robbie and swing yeah so um before we talk about robbie tell us a little bit more about your musical influences growing up well i had a um probably very similar to to guy chambers really my father was a musician 
Um, as you said, I grew up in a musical household. I have two brothers that are professional musicians. Mm -hmm. um, I studied uh, piano and then violin. Not, not that anyone would ever have wanted to hear me play the violin. <laughs> and, and then trumpet. Um, and I, I just went to an ordinary school, if you like a comprehensive school. We had a very good brass teacher, and he had a very sort of successful school brass band. And I won a scholarship when I was quite young. In fact, I've actually cheered myself up a bit recently. Um, I don't know if you want to hear that I've broken my leg, so I'm oh, sitting yeah. here with my leg slightly higher than um, it would normally be, and it's quite early days. And I actually did some trumpet practice today, and I remembered that when I was quite young, I broke my leg again playing football. Oh, yeah, I remember hearing that story. Uh, and... All I had to do for quite a few months was practice. I'd just uh, taken up the trumpet. Yeah. So I, I, I did that, that practice thing that most kids won't do because I, I think I was, I was – so there wasn't an awful lot of things I could do, and I really enjoyed it. So I think I probably have, you know, broken legs to sort of – maybe this one will change something for me. I don't know. <laughs> but um, – but it certainly made me work hard at the trumpet, and and I, you know, I won scholarships to the to the Royal College and then to Guildhall, and there was a an establishment still going called the National Youth Jazz Orchestra, mm -hmm. and back in those days, for for brass players, there was no real um, academy of learning in the commercial sense. It was all very classical. Uh, unlike in America, there was one college in Leeds that was was very good and had some great teachers and turned out some some great players. But generally, the the more established institutions, if you like, the Royal College Guild, or didn't have jazz courses or any commercial music interest. So, really, a whole load of us, including a lot of the guys that I would have worked with with Robbie, uh, the brass players and the rhythm players, in fact, would have come through the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. Yeah which was a, a, a fantastic learning ground. I don't know if you've heard of it before. Um, it's, st it's still running in quite, quite I think, even a, a more formal fashion than it used to be. But through those those people, I mean, I ended up working with, with all sorts of people, enjoyed, I always enjoyed the jazz and the pop yeah. thing, you know, probably more than the classical thing. And I got involved with playing with bands, and I think the first known band I played with were called Haircut 100. Wow. Oh, yeah. Who you may or yeah. may not remember. Yeah, I do remember. Um, I guess I was only about nineteen, and they had a number one album, and 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 we pretty much toured the world, wow. which was which was a fantastic start. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess the next big thing was was Wham, which I was a part of as well, which you didn't mention, no, which didn't you might mention. not have known or no. or. Uh, Sorry, we missed that one. Or cared about? I don't know. No, <laughs> you no, do it's, care it's, about it's, that. It's fine. <laughs> Excuse me. So, but I had a long association with 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 George. I mean. Probably George Michael and Robbie are the two most well-known artists that I've worked most extensively with. Yeah, um, and and George right through to Symphonica, but but uh, I even worked with George before his his Wham days. Mm. Um, he was quite local to me. We both grew up in sort of north of North London, yeah. and um, and cross paths. And I played on a couple of his very early tracks, even even before those days. So. So you know, I guess like most people, we built up a network of, of friends and colleagues and, and things developed from there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so wow. um, if we go back to the beginning with Robbie, did you come to work with him because of Guy? That's probably true, yes. I think the first involvement was probably Let Me Entertain You. Yeah, you played the trumpet, and did you, on that? Yeah, I arranged the track with with uh, Guy as well. I think that's one of the few times I actually contracted a band as well, which is something I did reluctantly. Um, and that was recorded. Um, it's really a, a big band in the distance on that track. And then there's a trumpet solo at the end, which was um, myself and, and uh, the late, great Derek Watkins. Um, and that was uh, an idea possibly of Guy's that we did a kind of trumpet duet at the end, which is sort of... Fairly, fairly well known, I guess, for for an instrumental section of a song, yeah. um, and that was. I think we did two tracks on that session. I think it was that and Ego a Go Go. Yeah. I think was the other track Which I love as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was early days, and I remember um, spending time with Guy at his flat, which was then in Archway, working working on that. We recorded at a, a, a studio called Lansdowne, mm -hmm. which I believe is uh, Swanky Apartments now in Holland Park. <laughs> All right. 
but it was a it was a great recording studio, and uh, that's where we recorded all the band parts for for those two songs. That's my earliest memory. Yeah. Although I think I used to play in in some of those um, TV type bands, if you like Sunday Night at the Palladium or the Royal Variety Show. So I think yeah. I'd come across right. Robbie. In, in fact, I think I met him a couple of times through Guy, and I think someone else that I knew that was in the band at at some kind of backstage at some of those kind of events. Right, I see. So was he actually there when you were recording? Because famously he didn't really like being in the studio. He was definitely there oh, when okay. we recorded the band for, for Let Me Entertain You. I remember him being there, yeah. yeah. He was very enthusiastic about it. He, I, I remember that, yeah. He was yeah, he, he was excited about it. And, and you know, as, as always, uh, you know, brought great energy to the room. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So what were your first impressions of Rob? Did you, were you kind of thinking that he was just a teenage, come from a boy band and he wasn't going to do that uh, well or did the music? No, I don't. I I, I wouldn't say I, I had a I had a particularly strong opinion. Like I say that, you know, the couple of times I met him, he, he, he'd he been been pleasant. And, and at, at that session, he was very enthusiastic. I mean, it was great for me and for my colleagues and and. You know, I'm a big fan of the music business and employing people. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there was a load of musicians making a, a whole load of noise, which wasn't always happening on pop records. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know, so that to me was exciting. The fact that the artist was enjoying that was, was you know, very nice. And, and you know, I, I I probably thought highly of him for that alone, if, if you know what I mean, yeah. without having yeah. really heard him sing the song mm-hmm. or anything. But his, his general demeanour, which I'm sure will come on to with the... Yeah swing yeah. stuff and everything was you know maybe a lot of that was his background as well growing up mm. you know with his dad mm. and and listening to brass music yeah. and yeah and and i think he's always had a, an empathy with that kind of sound yeah yeah we're always impressed actually when we've been reviewing you know over the years the different tracks on all the albums how how rich and and how much depth uh and uh, you know layered nature there is to the to, to most of his tracks, you know, like you say, there's a lot, there's usually a lot going on. I think, you know, some of that's Guy's influence, but it's, it's sure. quite, it's quite something. Like you say, when you compare it to the early days of pop, it, there weren't many other people doing that. And I think it sort of set, set him and it's you aside, you know? Yeah. I, th- I think that's, I think that's a good point. Mm. Yeah. They were, they were quite in depth, uh, the tracks and, and, um, yeah, cert- certainly. I mean, obviously, the latest album ha- has that element as well. Mm. So, yeah, which we're excited to talk to you about. <laughs> um, and then, did you hear Angels quite early on before it came out? And what did you think of that? Um, Angels. I think I was still um, doing a lot of studio trumpet playing. I actually was in the orchestra for the for the recordings oh. uh, of that song, mm. which was done at Angel Studios. I've seemed to remember. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think uh, my colleague um, and friend, an amazing arranger, Nick Ingman, was responsible for the orchestral arrangement of that. Um, yeah, I remember hearing it. I mean, you know, obviously that's that's you know possibly yeah. the defining yeah. song, isn't it? That, that you know, it, I guess if we picked one, that would that would be it. Yeah, yes. it so, so uh, I can't. I'm not aware of the first time I heard it sung as a as a complete song. Right. Uh, but I, I, I remember the recording session somehow. Yeah. yeah. And you were impressed? You liked it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you next worked with Rob on Sing When You Winning, I believe, um, by which time he was quite a big star, and you played trumpet on Rock DJ, I think. Is that right? Yeah. I, I mean, really, my role was, was I was, you know, I, I, I was part of the brass section. I guess I was in charge of the brass section, for want of a better term, and yeah. I used to... Do the arrangements for the brass. Yeah. So, so that there was, you know, a studio process involved with that, and then that went on to the tours where we mm-hmm. had a, a a brass section, and again, quite a big brass section for mm. for a, a touring band. You know, yeah. you, you rarely see more than three people. I think we had six, and then five. So, right. yeah. Um, but yeah, I played on. Yeah, all, I mean, all of the tracks in those early days, I yeah. Yeah. played on. Yeah, it was the Sermon on the Mount tour in 2000 to 2001. And Neil, your brother, was in that band with you as well. Neil, my brother, yep. Yep. And uh, Paul Spong on trumpet, Simon Gardner on trumpet, uh, and Chris White and Dave Bishop. 
with the saxophone players. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I recognise the names. You enjoyed that then, that tour? Because you don't really do touring anymore, do you? Uh, I don't get asked. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know what I do on the tour anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, I do I do bits of travelling and touring, whether I'm conducting or... Yeah. Um, so, but I haven't really toured in that capacity for a while. Um, did I enjoy touring? I, I absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's, it's great. You, you kind of live in a lovely plastic bubble and everyone does everything <laughs> for you and you just go to work and it's... <laughs> you stay in nice hotels with all your mates. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know whether you were on stage when Kylie joined him in Manchester and they sung Kids together. Yes, I was. So you do remember that. I was just wondering what the buzz was like when that happened in the arena. Yeah, that was fantastic. We did a couple of things with her. Wasn't it an MTV award show as well? In, yes, was it, they did do that together as well, yeah. Maybe in, was that in Scandinavia or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. At least two times I remember her sort of being there. So. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's she's great, isn't she? I mean, like. She is, yeah. I Absolutely. Love her. We all we all love Kylie. Yeah. yeah I've been lucky enough do. to work with her and come across her a few times and yeah, she's always a delight, so. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've got great chemistry when they get together. They're really good. Together. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, next was the weddings, bar mitzvahs and stadiums tour. In the summer of two thousand and one, so I think you were part of that one. We we're wondering yes. how did how did Rob react? How how was the mood with the first uh, stadium tour? Without being the the first big one, he said he said in his autobiography that he only enjoyed five percent of it. By the way, um, <laughs> was that apparent or did he mask it well? Was the question? Um, was that was that including Nebworth that tour? No, was no, Nebworth is is two years later. Yeah. So no, you this, guys know so uh, much more than me. Summer 2001. Milton Keynes Bowl, I think it was, in the UK. and Yeah, um, possibly. I, I I honestly do not remember any any details. I mean, I've got some some sort of sketchy memories. That I think I think occasionally, you know, he had my maybe possibly some kind of reluctance to, to go on. I think he, you yeah. know, I, I don't know whether it was a stage fright or... Mm. Or when it was a time in his life, I, I, I see, seem to vaguely remember that he, you know, he he took a bit of coaxing on. But you know, that kind of thing's not unusual. You know, from from yeah. what I've seen with artists, it, it's it's yeah. you know, it, it's a hard place to be. You know, out yeah. front, you've you've got a microphone yeah. and, and and we're looking yeah. at each other talking, and there's not really much of an audience here. You start sticking, you know, stick a yeah. You know, hundred thousand yeah, people thousand in front people. of you, and, yeah. and and all of a sudden, things that seem very easy seem very difficult. Yeah. Yes. And and like I say, it, it, that wouldn't be a unique thing for Rob. You know, I, I did a, a an event at the Roundhouse um, uh, just a few weeks ago. It was it was a charity for um, Parkinson's UK, and yeah. and it was called the Big Comedy Shake Up. And these guys do this fantastic work, and I had a house band. Some of the guys that I played with with Robbie. And we had some play-ons and some music items and, and, and some stand-up comedians. And, and one of the comedians decided, you know, he couldn't go on. He was, he, he kind of, I'm not, I'm not saying this is what Robbie did, but he had a bit of a freak yeah. out said, I can't do it. And, every, and you know, people were very kind. I said, Let's, it's fine, don't worry, you know, have a drink. If you don't want to go on, go home, thanks, for, you know. And, but it, it's, for, it's, it's very understandable and very... Very, yeah. you, you know, it's a human emotion, so yeah. I wouldn't yeah. read too much into that. That's uh, no. that'd be a very, very normal thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely couldn't do it. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. way. Well, I guess there's quite a difference between you would know, Steve. There's quite a difference between you know a concert hall, an arena, and then a stadium. You know, it must be quite hard. It's quite hard to wrap your head around how many people are actually sat there in front of you. I, yeah. would, I would imagine. I don't know whether that yeah. crosses your mind when you're performing, but. I don't. I don't always think that the bigger venues, for for me as a performer in a different kind of way. Obviously, my profile is 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 nothing like someone like Rob's. Um, but you know, I've had to play the trumpet and 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 speak to people and conduct people, and it's it's amazing. Sometimes you can be in a really small jazz club, you know, with with half a dozen people and feel more nervous than you yeah. would in front of a, a full theatre or right. a huge or a huge stadium, you know. And, I think 
I conducted the Olympics closing ceremony that you mentioned earlier, and there were three and a half billion people or something oh, yeah. watching. Good. And I, I just, I was there thinking, hey, this is fun, isn't it? There's like, <laughs> whereas I could, I could have to speak in front of five people and be really scared. Yeah. So you, you just, you just never know how nerves or your perception of how people are, are yes. seeing you, seeing you goes. You know, it's there's there's yeah. lots of factors. Yeah. yeah. So then we get to swing when you're winning album, which obviously you played a very big part in. Um, you co-produced it, orchestrated, and conducted nearly all the songs. Yeah, that, that was a that was a, a you know a, a really huge thing for me. It was, um, I guess, uh, what, what happened was that um, Rob was asked to do the end titles for Bridget Jones' diary. Yeah. yeah. And and someone someone I, I'm trying to remember the supervisor's name who was a, um was it working title I think with the company yeah that's right and mm-hmm. anyway he had a, he had an idea I think for Robbie to sing sing Have You Met Miss Jones which to be honest is is quite a tricky song to sing and and stylistically it's a long way from anything that Rob had really done yeah and you know it, not particularly easy I, I mean plenty of for want of a better word, pop singers have tried to sing swing music. Yeah, a lot of them probably because of that album, and and you know, yeah. with respect, it ain't always great. And uh, but but uh, as I mentioned earlier, Rob grew up with that music and had a real yeah feel for it and empathy, which is something you can't learn in two minutes. So so he was very impressive with that. But more to the point, that the I seem to remember the arrangement needed doing. Guy and Rob were going to LA to do something or other, and and I think Guy asked me if I knew anyone in LA, which was very disappointing for me that could do it because they needed to do it out there. <laughs> so I suggested someone, and fortunately, I think they got too busy, and it came back to me fairly last minute. And we recorded uh, at Angel Studios, big band. Rob came in, sung it, and I think he was thrilled. Is is what I gather. I mean, I remember being invited to the premiere of the film at Leicester Square, which was which was nice of I, I guess that came through through Rob's management. Um and it was it was a really you know, he was very thrilled about the whole experience of doing a swing track with a big band. And then I got a call pretty much out of the blue saying he wants to do a whole album of that. You know, can you come into the office for a meeting? So and it all happened very quickly. And um Chris Briggs, who was um uh, the record co- you, you probably probably know Chris who who's I was, I was he was he worked for the record company and got everything set up and we went to record at Capitol Studios in LA with you know LA's finest with uh, a very very famous engineer called Al Schmidt who yes. sadly sadly passed away last year um, and Al had uh, been responsible for some of the original Sinatra recordings done in yeah. in uh, Capitol Studios so. It was done in absolutely the best way possible, and and that's pretty much it. And then there was a release concert at the Albert Hall. I do remember Rob was was kind of fairly um, reluctant at one point to to do that Albert Hall gig. But I, I, again, I think it's just the same thing. It's not that he didn't want to do it. I think you know it's just probably a, a moment. I mean, but thank goodness he did it because I mean, what a Oh, you know, I- iconic moment in his career. I, I mean, I, I don't know what Rob would pick. I'd never ask him, and I wouldn't be fishing for that kind of thing. But I'm sure it's up there for him in, in his favourite nights. I'm sure. Yeah, and was it really just one take? What the Albert Hall? Yeah. He oh just yeah. Did it straight through. It, no. it looked as though it's filmed as live. I mean, you know, it, it was it's so. It's so to us as you know, we're not. We're not world-class musicians like you but you know to us it was just an immaculate performance i mean we were so surprised at how good it was you know it was just incredible i don't remember doing any retakes obviously it wasn't live but i i I really i really can't remember us doing a retake i i don't think we did yeah it was just said that it was straight through yeah yeah Yeah. it was I'm pretty everyone, sure yeah. everyone was in the moment and uh it was yeah just uh, we wish we were there <laughs> at the time but yeah it was, it was incredible it was it was a really it was a really special show and you know excuse me i had i had messages from you know great musicians and and people that i admire and uh, from all over the world about that show saying you know prop i say proper you know serious musicians that that would not yeah. possibly 
generally watch you know someone someone like Rob who who is yeah. you know yeah. a, a pop star whatever you want to want to call him, but lots of you know sophisticated all, all sorts of people commenting on how great it was. You know, it was a, it was a really great musical thing to do. And consequently, I think it, it brought a whole genre of music to a whole new generation of people. Yeah. Yes, it did. And, yeah. you know, arguably, you know, that, that style of music, that kind of songwriting has never really been emulated. And, and it's, mm. a, it's a whole education. It's, it's a history lesson. Mm. And, um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a big part of the journey of how music got to where it's got to. Yeah. So... Just rewinding back a little bit, just so our listeners understand what what you do. I mean, Lucy said you co-produced, you orchestrated, you conducted. You know, tell us a little bit more in layman's terms about what what your your jobs. I think it's more than one job by the sounds of it. Involve, you know, what do you, yeah, well, what do the, you cover? Sure. So, so the 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 first bit's probably the arranging bit, which is where we take a song, um, a song that's probably been done before. Uh, well, they'd all been done before. Well, no, sorry, they hadn't all. Most of those songs on that record yeah. have been done before. And you'd sit down with Rob and you have to work out the right key for him. So, for instance, he has a higher voice than Sinatra had. So yeah. you wouldn't do it in the same key as Frank Sinatra. You'd probably do it a, a couple of steps higher, if that makes sense. I don't want to yeah. bore yeah. anyone with too many technical details. Yeah. Um, I think also there was... Uh, there were some mood things that I I felt and discussed that needed changing. Um, for instance, if you listen to the original "Have You Met Miss Jones," the intro and the outro—that's the the beginning and and, mm-hmm. and and the end section—are very kind of cool and laid back, and you can kind of see Frank strolling across the stage with his tie loose, and you know, and maybe yeah. at that time, you know, we're talking twenty years ago, Rob, Rob was, you know. Pe- He's always been energetic, but probably more yeah. so than he is now. And I yeah. couldn't really see him walking on to that. I, I thought, you know, this is, you know, he's going to want to come on and, and be Rob. So <laughs> I completely rewrote the introduction and, and the end bit to to try and, you know, give it a, a twist of Rob. Okay. So, <laughs> so there's those kind of things to consider. And then with, with the production, you know, I don't really get credited as a producer on there, although I, um, I kind of would suggest that you know i was involved in the production you know that's very much you know how do we go about recording a big band which is something i I probably had more experience of than than most of the people around me at at that time Uh, how we record the big band you know how we layer it up how we you know they had al schmidt so he didn't need me to tell him how to mix it but you know i still had a i still had a a comment and i was i was you know attending all the mixes um which were done, we recorded in LA, then we recorded a few bits of stuff with John Lovett in New York. Um, is that World Did You Ever, I think, we recorded yeah. in New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recorded the strings uh, back in London, and then we mixed in London. In fact, um, I'll, I'll never forget that I was sitting with Al Schmidt in uh, Studio, I think they called it Studio One at Air Lindhurst, um, when 9 11 happened. Oh. Which was uh, oh. that was actually while we were mixing that album, and um, Al, who um, is always a very busy man, I mean, I think was then stuck in London for at least a week longer than he mm. wanted to be because all flights were cancelled and stuff. Yeah. Uh, which is lovely. I, I got to know this incredible man who he came to came to over to my house for dinner a couple of times, and and, oh, and you know, I mean. I can't really. Th- I don't want to say there's any positives out of what happened, but but uh, no. anyway, that that happened at that time. So so that's the production side was really, you know, making sure the recording process runs properly. Um, yeah. Conducting the orchestra was just conducting the orchestra. So yeah, he obviously so yeah. <laughs> so you know, Guy and uh, I think Steve Power was there for some of it. Um, would sit in the control room, and I would sit out with the orchestra and um, tell them what I thought they should do. And yeah. sometimes they might listen, other times maybe not. <laughs> um, and wait then, for the odd quip from Robbie every now and again. Yeah, right? well, well, yeah. But Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob sat in that studio at Capitol and sung everything live with the band. Oh, um, wow. And um, I mean, at the time, he's, he, you know, I mean, he said it was, uh, uh, 
it was something along the lines that is the mo- most fun I've ever had making music. So, yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. You know, he was sitting, you know, in Sinatra's place with Sinatra's mic, probably on Sinatra's stool. And, you know, with, with an, an, an amazing big band. I mean, I was working in Los Angeles with, with the world's finest musicians. It was, you know, there was nothing yeah. not to like. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, has that answered all the roles that you asked me about? Yes, I, I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't. Which is, you know, sense. Yeah. for sort of a normal Robbie fan, it, you know, we don't necessarily yeah. understand all, all these things. Yeah. So it's just interesting to hear it. It was, yeah, it was, it was a really, it was a really amazing time. Um, you know, it, I, I, I love doing that album and, and then, you know, subsequently it changed things as well for, for me. It was a big thing for me, you know, not yeah. in, a, in a different kind yeah. of way. So uh, yeah, very very fond memories of that whole that whole thing. And I I personally think that we have Rob to thank for Michael Bublé and um, <laughs> the ongoing sort of resurgence of swing that has happened since then. I think you're absolutely right. I, I think um, I think his his album, like as I already said, awoken. Yeah, a, a whole generation to that music, and I, yes. I think is it still his best-selling album? I know it, it, it um, was. I think it is. Yeah, it's world worldwide. Yeah. yeah, I've been expecting it was his best-selling in the UK, but I yeah. think Swing might be second. Yeah, yeah. I think the theory was that all the fans went out and bought two copies, one for them and one for their dad. Well, because of yeah. the genre of music, so uh, that is. I did buy one for my gran. Yeah, there you go. You, you yeah. see, you, you probably bought two copies. <laughs> I probably bought three. So, I probably bought one for my mum as well. Yeah, which is probably probably at least at least one more than you usually buy of the album. Yeah. So, yes. so, yeah, so that that's the point. It was, um, you know, it had a big appeal, and and you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure it added to his popularity as well. So, yeah, I, 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 uh, an older generation uh, appreciated him as, as much as the younger. Yeah. And I think, you know, you touched upon it before. Rob is so, I mean, we know Rob quite well. We certainly know his performance and, you know, his ways. And he's so at home on stage singing Swing. You know, you can feel it. And particularly in the yeah. Albert Hall show. But also when we saw the Swing tour as well. Yeah. He was just in his element. I mean, he was doing his comedy bits. He was doing his routines and his gestures, which all kind of went with it. But he was just so, there was some, some, you, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to describe. You could feel the energy coming off him. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I know, obviously, he grew up uh, listening to that music. You can tell, like you said, you can tell it's in his soul. It's in his blood. And obviously, his dad, you know, obviously was a big influence as well, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's just it's just something else when he performs Swing. Yeah. 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 yeah let's hope he does some more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. So should we go on to Escapology? I think you performed on some of the tracks on that as well, didn't you? Me and My Monkey. Yes. Yeah, Me and My Monkey, story song. I remember that. I think think there's a trumpet solo on that. I think that was me. Um, Yeah, I remember that was recorded. I think we recorded that in London. Hot Fudge, yes, I remember that as well. Yeah. Love that track. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Any good memories from from those recordings? Um, Not nothing particular. No, no, nothing. Nothing really stands out. Again, I think that was something they were going to do in LA and ran out of time. So that was good news for for me and, and my guys. <laughs> yeah, um, they they came back and did it here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, me and my monkey was was quite a tricky a tricky one. I seem to remember just musically, it was quite challenging. Um, but yeah, they're good good songs. And then, obviously, comes after Escapology comes Nebworth and the Weekends of Mass Distraction tour. Right, and you you were on that, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yes. So, what yes. are your memories of Nebworth? Were you nervous? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if I I got nervous. It was it was. I, I had a great time. I remember that. You know, it wasn't far from where I grew up, and and I had, you know friends there, and and yeah, it was a really special occasion i i actually was i played for oasis as well i i, I used to do oh. the brass for them so i i, I did nebworth with them oh, okay. um it was right. um if if liam's listening it was a much smaller show the oasis show which uh <laughs> it was uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't think i, was, was, I, I think if you concerts. yeah i think if you look at an aerial shot at the two there's 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 a perceivable difference <laughs> yeah 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'd I'd been there before, and and you know, I, I don't think that affected my nerves. It was it was just great. It was just joyous. I think we did three nights. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, it was it was just great. Did you get a helicopter in and out? No, I did not. Because we got stuck in until 4am <laughs> trying to get out of the car park. Oh, yeah. We spent um, longer in the car park than we did in the gig. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we did runners on that show. I, I, I'm, I'm sure Rob was helicoptered in. Yeah, um, he was, yeah. Uh, in fact, I, rem- I remember that he was. Um, but they were gigs where you know about runners when, when bands do runners, as we call them. You run out before. The, they let anyone else out of the car park well pretty much i mean you literally as you go off stage after your final encore you're straight into the buses i mean you're you're you know if you've got a trumpet you, you leave it there it's packed up for you your clothes yeah. your personal effects everything's in the bus ready to go you're literally 60 seconds after you've left the stage you're out on the road and, and you're gone yeah so um, I'm sorry about the four in the morning thing. I, I can't really do much about that. But I was, I was probably in the hotel bar by eleven. <laughs> Lucy was driving. I fell to sleep. Yeah, yeah but uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you did some work on intensive care. I think you played trumpet on tripping. I'm just wondering what the difference was working with Rob and Stephen Duffy versus Guy and Steve Power. Yeah, that was yeah, it was a different it was it felt slightly more I don't know, slightly more indie, I think, um mm-hmm. uh the process. And and we worked in a I seem to remember the brass was done at Rob uh, rented a temporary home which was also a, a, a you know, they built a, a a mobile studio within the within the house. Yeah. It, yeah, it was it was like a castle somewhere. I, I I couldn't tell you where it was. I have no recall of, um, but I remember it was a fair old drive. It was a fantastic place, um, but it was fine. I'd, I'd worked with Stephen Duffy before. Um, it was right. just it was just a you know slightly different process, but you know, Not basically I, the same. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't exclusively working with Rob. You know, no, I, no. I, yeah. I mean. I might have liked to have been, but but it doesn't work that way. You know, you work for him for yeah. a while, and and then there's nothing. You know, when when he finishes a tour and time mm-hmm. to an album, you know, I might not have seen him for a year or two years, or uh, yeah. and then then you have an intense sort of eighteen months where you see him all the time. So yeah, so so it wasn't strange for us to work with different people in different situations. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably more more strange for for Rob if you've been working with Steve and, and Guy all that time to. Yeah, work with something else. Uh, uh, work with somebody else. I, I, I seem to remember he was enjoying it. I thought, I think, I think they seemed to get on very well at the time. Yeah, well, it's a great album. Yes. Yeah. So skipping forward, uh, Steve, to swings both ways. You orchestrated yeah. and conducted the whole album, we believe, except for Snowblind. Yeah, that that was a good album. There's a couple of standout songs. Um, I was thrilled to work with Rufus Way, uh, Rufus Wainwright because he's a. Yeah. Uh, a great hero of mine. Um, I had actually played the trumpet at a festival with him once, but uh, really enjoyed. Um, that's the title track of the album, isn't it? Swing both ways. Yes, I love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was great, and it's a huge recording done at Abbey Road. Um, no expense spared, etc. Um, that was terrific. Um, I'm trying to remember. What we did. We did some of the other stuff in LA. Um, yeah, it was. It was it was great. It was great to be back and felt like doing the doing the, a lot of the swing album again, and then the added bonus yeah. of, of having these other writers and some some duets and, um, yeah, uh, Rufus Wainwright, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I'm more excited by by Ollie Mers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, he he's a good guy, and, and Rob obviously took a, a big liking to Ollie. I mean, a similar kind of personality, I guess. Yeah. I, I uh, think yes. I think Ollie probably modelled himself a bit on on Rob. I get. I, I, yes. yeah. I don't know that. I, I don't know when I'll say that. I've worked with with Ollie a couple of times. Uh, he was on one of the Children Need rock shows, and and, uh, yeah. and oh, great great lad, really really great fun yeah. and respectful and and easy to deal with. You know, really yeah. really nice guy. Um, I'm interested to know how it's changed working with Rob over the years. You know, how much more involved is he now compared to when you first knew him with the music? 
Um, I'm not sure. Sure, it has changed very much. No. Um, you know, Rob, Rob gets very involved with, with certain things, but he, you know, he, he's like you say, he's an entertainer, and he's he's you know clearly got his mind on on a lot of aspects of what he's doing. And there's yeah. more to it than just being in the studio and, and, and doing a lot of the yeah. stuff we can do. And and, and some of it's, it's it, it, you know, some of what we have to do in the studio process is not that interesting if you're just watching. You know, it's a it's yeah, it's kind of a little bit dull. I mean, you guys have to edit a, a, a show like this at the end, and it's yeah, you know what that's I mean. Like. Some of, some of it's good, but sometimes you must just think, oh crikey, I've got to cut that. <laughs> he he coughed there, right? There. Have we got another one? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, it's not all great fun, is it? When when when, no. when you're when you're doing doing that kind of stuff. So so uh, you know, he's he's not one of those artists I would say that would, would sit through doggedly through that whole process. But you know, he's yeah. he's got stuff to do, you know, and he's creative and he's he's doing doing lots of things. And and as you know, he's you know he's got interest in other things, fashion and painting and acting and and yeah. and, and his soccer aid and you know and yeah. and so he's he's got things to do and planning tours and he's very hands-on with with the whole creative aspect so so with the music i i don't i'm not aware that it ever changed much you know i, okay. I, have, I haven't been surprised i thought oh my goodness he's doing more he's doing less i think it's right. it's always been about the same i think oh, okay that's interesting and and does recording his vocals with a full orchestra uh you know change his performance do you think does that improve help um, he's like showing off to them. That's what Steve Power said. <laughs> um, yeah, showing off's a bit harsh. Um, did you actually do some of? The, did you do live recording with the orchestra and, and you know? How yeah, well, was the process? We we did swing both ways, uh, like that with Rufus and him sung live in the studio. Um, yeah. As I said earlier, you know, with the big band, he sung live. You know, yeah. with most artists, there's some kind of isolation. And yeah. and there may be a few things that you're not happy with that you pick up later. You know that's the process. Yeah. It is it is with every single artist I've ever worked with. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm, you know, when we've done a, a full band kind of setup, Rob's always wanted to sing live with with the band, and yeah, I, I think he enjoys the process. I think he enjoys being part of it, and I think it lifts him and and lifts his performance, and and yeah. he enjoys it. I, I you know I wouldn't agree it's showing off i would say it's more enjoying himself really right yeah it's just steve power told us that um he saved the recording of the let me entertain you vocals for when he knew zoe ball was coming into the studio <laughs> that's slightly different to a live <laughs> orchestra yeah <laughs> yeah that's another thing altogether <laughs> oh look, look look there's not there's not one person amongst us or anywhere in the world that hasn't stepped up some kind of performance because you know you know like when your girlfriend watched. when the girlfriend was watching you playing football you ran that little bit faster didn't you you know <laughs> True. you know we we've all we've all so yes if that's showing off then he's showing off yeah for sure yeah. you know <laughs> but but yeah we've we've all done that's that's human nature isn't it do you have a favorite song on the swings both ways album do you think yeah, it swings both ways. Yeah, yeah, it is it's by a, a genius by genius a mile. Lyrics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely, it is. A- absolutely. The chemistry brilliant. between them is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's great. He's, yeah, that, that's yeah by far my favourite song on the album. Right, and then um, you did the musical arrangements for the live at the Palladium show, and I'm just wondering. <laughs> this is. I love this question, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> Was working with Miss Piggy a career highlight? No. <laughs> Not really. I mean, don't forget, I was the back end, so I could see what was going on. Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. Ruins the magic. Yeah. Because I, I'm just behind looking around and thinking, oh, is that it? You know, <laughs> she's not real. <laughs> it's very oh, disappointing. God. Yeah, heartbreaking. Um <laughs> But yeah, that was a show just just based on the albums. I mean, th- those both that show and the uh, live at the Albert, and of course we did the Pinewood special, which never really seems to get a mention. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. Um, you know, that they're very much one. adaptations of of what we've done live or on the album, or sometimes ex- you know so- somewhere across between the album and what's live. We might have had a bigger musical setup, but but again, there's 
you know, I'd like to credit myself a little with 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 like to think that you have to make some things work slightly differently when it's when it's a live show like that, particularly when there's television yeah. involved. It's you know, it's just little tweaks and and um, stuff, and you know, you're working with a director and 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 there's 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 other boxes to tick. So um, yeah, the plating was a good show, but yeah, Miss Piggy was yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that she's not listed on your bio of uh, people that you've worked with. <laughs> that, that will be changed tomorrow. <laughs> that's really bad. That's that's going on there. I, I never actually thought I should do that, but you're absolutely right. So that's going to be changed. Yeah. <laughs> She'll outlive all of us. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um. And then you did the musical arrangements for the Swings Both Ways tour. What does that involve? Because obviously I don't think you actually went on the tour, did you? Uh, no, I, I set it up. I was, I was there for the beginning. I didn't play on it. I, I mean, again, the process pretty much, um, I kind of just answered that in, in the last bit. It, it, it's adapting the stuff to make it work okay. live. I mean, live, so right, okay. yeah, so you, you, it was a much smaller ensemble than the record for the Swing stuff, although that wasn't the whole part of the tour. Yeah. Um, so... It was, yeah. It, it took a bit of, of, of setting up, you know, and 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 kindly they employed me to do that. And and there it, it, it was, yeah, to make that show work was was one of the more tricky shows, I, I would say, insofar as it it was a live show that was, you know, very much cross cross musical genres, and mm, and yeah. and to make them all work within the same same set, if you like, you yeah. know, took took some doing. Um, I think it was a successful tour. I mean, I, oh, it was. I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like I say, I was I was there for the first few shows, right? And then I think I came to the London show and, and all through rehearsals. But no, I didn't actually go on the tour. No, no, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, great, great tour. And then, um, then there's the Christmas present. Yes, and you were involved in a lot of that, I believe. What oh. Yeah, it's strange. I have less recall of the more recent things than the old things. <laughs> the Christopher, yeah, it was fine. It was, um, yeah, again, it was quite a few quite different songs, I seem to remember. Yeah, that was just um, why there's the two CDs. They're quite yeah. different to each other. Yeah, there was there was some big band stuff and there's some orchestral stuff. But yeah, that was, that again, uh, what year was that? 2019. Is it that recent? Crikey, what's going yeah. on with me? Um, <laughs> I guess you must have been working on it quite a way before that, though. I'm I'm going to have to look it up. Isn't that really bad? <laughs> no, not, at, not at all, Steve. Don't worry. <laughs> Crack! I did a lot more on the Christmas album than I remember. Yeah, I did think that you had done quite a few. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think it was the whole album. Yeah, the whole yeah, first the CD. First. Yeah, yes. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> let's see the Metropole one. Yeah, that was that was July July two thousand nineteen. Okay, all that stuff. So there you go. That's 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 confirmed that. So July. In fact, we did it at Angel Studios. I I used to use Angel Studios all the time. In fact, it's reopened recently, um, which is great news because it's a, it's a great studio in Islington, which is you know it's a really good size for a lot of the things you do. If you don't want to have the sort of hugeness of Abbey Road, yeah. um etc it's a it's a really really good uh good studio to use and i was recording so much stuff there at one point that i actually bought a box of christmas decorations which i think is still there <laughs> <laughs> so in june and july I'd, I'd do three or four christmas albums and i would decorate the studio <laughs> that's a good idea <laughs> try and get a little bit of atmosphere going everyone's walking yeah, in their shorts <laughs> it wasn't it my involvement wasn't as great on that album, I don't think, as as some of the other albums. I mean, I came in, did the arrangements, and, and went away, and then yeah. I wasn't involved in any of the touring. I don't know how much of that he did live. He only did a couple of shows. Mm. Yeah, just a couple of so special shows. It's probably why, why I don't remember it as well. So, so it was, you know, it was it wasn't as as um, as involved for me maybe as some of the as as, as some of the other stuff. Right. I know. What, what was it? Guy said to us, and we met him recently. He said. Uh, 
it doesn't count that as touring. Oh, yeah. It was, it was more like a hobby, that, uh, yeah. that project. <laughs> oh, well, the Christmas one. For him. Yeah. 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 yeah I, a hobby. I, 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 you see, I think that's the other thing. I'm not sure if, if Guy was involved as much as usual. He was working with some other producers. and yeah. uh, I, I can't... Guy was involved, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know if he was involved in the whole thing as right. as he usually was. Well, maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, I'm pretty sure he was pretty involved, yeah. Well, he did say it was a hobby, so maybe not as involved as he might normally be. Yeah. <laughs> possible. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't remember that involvement and being part of the circle as much as I have done some of the other projects. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, most excitingly, recently it's been announced that Robbie's releasing his greatest hits, 25, and you have helped work on a lot of that. Yeah, I ended up doing quite a lot of tracks. It started off, I wasn't doing many, and then I think the album grew. Um, and really, I mean, my involvement with that was that um, we recorded full orchestra in Holland, with the Metropole Orchestra. Yeah. Um, yeah. During COVID, I remember having to go there and sat, sat in a hotel room on my own for a week before I was allowed to even oh, go, no. and, go and say hello to anybody. Wow. Um, so did everyone uh, in the orchestra have to do that? No, because they were, they were local. Because uh, they were there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I flew in. Um, and I think I, I shared the project with Jules Buckley and Jules lives in Europe as well. So it's pretty much... Oh, I think Guy and, Guy and Richard Flack had to do the same thing. But they were there, they were working with somebody else did the first sort of three or four days and I did the last three or four days. Right. Yeah. So so I had, uh, and they were staying in a house together, so I couldn't really then go and join them as a COVID risk. So I was in a yeah. a little hotel all on my own for a week. <laughs> the things you do for Robbie. I used to sne- <laughs> sneak down and have a, have a coffee in the garden when no one was looking. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was great. You know, I haven't heard it yet, so I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Um, oh, right. You know, have, have you heard it? We've heard Angels. Angels, so far. yeah. Yeah. That's I, I, all that's come out so far. Yeah, I, I've heard it. So I haven't actually had a chance to listen to it yet, but I, no, I, I haven't heard the album. I wasn't involved right. with the production. I I orchestrated and kind of that, that was that. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I'm interested about. Um, for for the first swing album, apparently, no, sorry, for I mean, swings both ways. Robbie said that swing versions of "Let Me Entertain You" and "Millennium" were created by you and Guy, mm-hmm. and I'm interested to know whether it's those versions that are going to be on this 25 album, or whether you've created completely new versions again. Um, they they're not. Well, I'm not aware of those versions that I created. Right. Um, okay. We had a swing medley, like a greatest hit swing medley we wrote at one point, um, mm-hmm. which I don't know. We obviously thought it was a good idea. I, I don't know whether Rob didn't think it was a good idea, but but it's never seen the light of day. But who knows? You know, there's, there's <laughs> a. Um, I think I think um, I think I used some of those things as play ons and playoffs, if you like, for maybe the Albert Hall show or certainly the Palladium. That yeah. there's swing versions of Millennium and Let Me Entertain You as as Walcott music as bits. So I think right. I think I stole my own ideas for a, a couple of <laughs> um Walcons, but no, sadly, um Rob was a big fan of, of uh Paul Anker's album. I think it was called Rock Swings. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No. Um and Paul Anker, who's a wonderful sort of big band swing singer. Also f- I'm pretty sure he wrote my way. He actually composed my right. Oh, yeah, well. that rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. the name rings a bell for that. Yeah. And he did an album, oh, crikey, a long time ago. Now, I'm, it might be after Rob's album, so, so probably around 2005, called Rock Swings, and there's all sorts of surprisingly um, adapted tracks from all sorts of people into into a swing style. And it's really, yeah. I've got to say, it's good. And the arranger's fantastic and, and Paul Anker sings great so I, I kind of th- guess we had an idea to do that with some of Rob's songs but they, they haven't seen the light of day but you know hey who knows yeah 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 maybe maybe one day <laughs> do you know if you've worked on any of the new songs that we're getting so Lost The World and Her Mother 
more than this or disco symphony which is not necessarily a new song but okay i did uh better man i think bodies candy home thoughts from abroad hot fudge lazy days millennium more than you asked about more than didn't you yeah more than this or yeah. More than this yeah 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 I, d- I did that yeah and mother and sexed up ah right that's oh, so quite a, a few of the new ones then yeah. But you don't remember yeah, them I, to tell I, us anything about them. Um, I, I kind of remember them. I, I, I never heard the vocals um, finished. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, oh, because cause the process was such that we did them before. Yeah. So so what, what, that's one of the difficulties, you know, because songs, obviously I knew the lyrical content, but when you're an arranger, sometimes you, you get to do all your stuff before you actually hear the vocal. Right. Right. Yeah, that must and, be hard. And... And it's much more well as long as you know what it's doing and what it's going to do, and you've heard a demo, then then and you've got it in your head. It's okay, I okay. think. But if you've got no idea what the vocal does, it's it's yeah, that's yeah. kind of not not ideal, really. No, you know. That's what if I when, when I teach my students, I always say the first thing is that you should actually understand the song, yeah, before you start having any ideas about what the music should do, yeah. So you can't really tell us, you know, whether there's anything that's going to surprise us from that album with how any of those songs sound now. As well as the orchestral elements, which is what I was involved in, you know, there's plenty of other st- stuff going on on those tracks, yeah. plus the vocals, plus choirs, plus plus backing vocals. So, so no, I, I haven't heard it enough to, no. you know, I, I was I was very much part of the process um, and haven't heard the finished thing. So, so I, I'm not. I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> you'd have thought they'd have sent it bits to me, wouldn't you? To well, have a listen, really, but yeah. no. <laughs> maybe it's not even finished yet. <laughs> uh, I would imagine it's finished. Well, it's out but, September, um, so September ninth. Yeah, mm. so it should be. Yeah, I, I, I know it's finished. I know it's long been finished, but you know, but even, like, even the guys that work on on the stuff, you know, they're not at liberty to send those things no, out of because not. That, no, no, that's understandable. You know, it's, yeah, it's all top secret, and, and 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 people just don't do that anymore. It's so easy to have things, yeah, stolen, ripped off, yeah. or stolen, or released when you don't want to. So, yeah. so the easiest way with all these things is just not to not to send them out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, tell us what the best thing is about working with Rob. I would say joy and happiness. You know, it, it's you know some of the happiest times i've had making music have have been been with him yeah. you know and around him and the people around him you know the the sort of the happy happy side of him that you see and and that energy and and all that goes with it's infectious and and it's like i say it's been a, it's been a big thing for me over the years and and it's encouraged me um i've learned a lot by it and you know i hope that he's kind of taken some stuff from from people like me as well you know they've worked hard to try and enhance his music and 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 steer things in the right direction so you know and and, and you do feel part of it when you work with him so so you feel like you're very much part of a mm. a winning team if right. it doesn't sound like too too much of a pun on anything <laughs> um but yeah i i, I think you know joy and happiness in making music is really important mm-hmm. you know and and, it, and it's you know, most of the time it's been a very happy process, you know. And the only bits that haven't been is because usually I'm probably not happy with what I've done. Right. You know, or someone else isn't, and they're probably quite right because, you know, it's got it's got to be right. Yeah. But, yeah, well, I've had some great times. And, and you know, and I, mi- I miss it. You know, I'm I'm not part of the touring setup anymore. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there occasionally to do things. But, yeah. Yeah. but, you know, I had a great time. And, and you know, I hope at some point, um, you know, he's catching me up on age. So, so hopefully at some point... <laughs> Uh, we'll get to do some good stuff together, uh, together again. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe you'll be involved in some of the promo for this album. You know, if he does a show of some kind, maybe you'll be up there yeah, conducting uh, or something. Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> so have you got a memorable moment? What's your most memorable moment from working together? Uh, Albert Hall. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. I, yeah. I could, oh, just, yeah. Unbelievable show. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol. but that that whole album really that that was the yeah. that was the thing mm-hmm. yeah. you know record recording at capitol in in los angeles and and then the whole process that that Albert hall show was yeah that was that was the that was the moment but yeah we we we've had some had some fun it's been yeah it's been been some been some great some really really good times yes you know and hard times you know i, yeah, I mean look, let's not forget you know that 
that there's a lot of hard work involved for someone like Rob to to have achieved what he's achieved and to still be doing it, mm-hmm. you know. And and he's been doing it what what are we thirty years now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so so you know, we should never forget, you know, how hard he's worked. You know, the rewards are great in many ways. Yes, but um, you know, sometimes those rewards come Absolutely. at a price as well. Yeah. So, just before we wrap up this episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. And also, Lucy and I would really appreciate it if you can leave us a star rating. You can do this on both Apple and Spotify podcasts. We would also love it if you could write us a short review, and you can do this on Apple. Don't forget, you can check out our episode notes for each episode and links to all tracks and videos at robbywilliamsrewind.com. You can also email us at email at robbywilliamsrewind.com. Please also follow and chat on our social channels. It's at Rewind Robbie on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And you can also like and follow our Facebook page, Robbie Williams Rewind. And before we return to this episode, you might also consider sending us one of your own Robbie stories for the show. Just record a short audio clip on your phone and email it to us. Please check the website for more details. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. And hopefully, obviously, we don't know the full creative direction of the film that's coming out next year, the biopic that Rob's got coming out, Better Man. But hopefully some of that is actually reflected in in his biopic. You know, I'm sure. Albert Hall would, show. Yeah, that would be yeah. good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I hope so. I, I don't. I I really know nothing about it. No. Um, I know who who directed it, but yes. so that's about it. <laughs> you don't know who's playing you then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm actually. I've actually worked with the director a few times, and um, oh wow. Um, yeah, he's a great guy, um, and yeah, he's someone I'd like to work with more. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's public knowledge yet. So. Yeah, Michael Gracie. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah, um, yeah he's he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah he's it. amazing, amazing. I'm just wondering if you have a favourite Robbie song from any of his catalogue. Yeah, it swings both ways by a, by a mile. Yeah, but look, there's there's a lot of great songs. I think um, you know, let, let's hope he goes on entertaining people. You know, for a long time. Yeah, it's you know, there's the whole swing stuff to revisit. I'm sure, I'm sure that will come back. You know, whether it's in in you know time for me to still do anything else. but um one 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 always sort of thinks that maybe at some point that will that will be something that will yeah, come back so. in quite a strong way i would hope so i mean we went to see him in vegas uh and obviously there was a quite a few swing numbers included in that set yeah. and again he was just at home at home in vegas <laughs> so like, i bet yeah, yeah. I, I never saw i never saw the vegas show oh. i heard it but uh i'd like to have yeah, yeah. I'd been at that hotel just a few weeks before as well. I I, I went out there uh, for a holiday, um, right. and was staying staying at the Wynn. Um, funny enough, I, I'm going back there in a in a few weeks. I just found out today. Oh right. Um, if if my leg is uh, allows oh, me to, yeah. Yeah, but but um, uh, one of the musicals I I did you didn't mention is Bat Out of Hell. Uh, oh, you did mention that, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah. The yeah. gym. So that's opening in Vegas. Ah. Well, um, and uh, it needs reorchestrating uh, again. It's uh, Vegas has a very different setup for musicals. Um, right. They don't have an interval, for instance. Oh wow! Ooh. So they're ninety minutes because I, I think there's a f- several reasons, but probably the main one is they don't really want people sitting in a theatre for that long when back they can be the out. Casinos. Exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> get your wallet out. Get back on the table and lose some money, please. Um, <laughs> the shows are draw so. So, and a show like Bass Out of Hell, you know, Jim Steinman's amazing music and amazing songs. So you have to cut down that three-hour show to an hour and a half, and most of the songs last about an hour and a half. So, yeah, I was thinking so, that. So, um, so that's the challenge. So, yes, yeah, so I'll be out in, in Vegas in, in September. I, I have no idea whether Rob's playing there again. I, 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 it hasn't been said that he is, we hope. A lot of people are hoping that he does because he had to cancel some yeah. shows in the pandemic like a lot of people did. Um, I think it, I reckon it's on his list to do it again, but it's just probably fitting it in with all the things that he's got going on. 
Yeah. He's got a lot of projects happening at the same time now, it seems. Yeah, I never so. spoke to him about it, um, but I'm sure he really enjoyed it. Uh, well, his dad was there as well. So obviously his dad performed with him on quite a few of his live tours, uh, shows. But uh, yeah. I think that was special, wasn't it? Yeah. Pete was there singing along with him. So Yeah, well, Pete's, yeah. Pete's great. Has Pete been on the show? No, we haven't asked him. We'll, we'll get him on. <laughs> he, yeah, he sort of, follows us, doesn't he, and tweets and interacts. So, yeah. Oh, well, hello. Pete he- I like Pete. Hi, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> hello, mate. Give us a call. I'd like to, it'd be lovely to sp- speak to you at some point. <laughs> Well, I think we're nearly there. Yeah. I think that's it. Thank yeah. you um, very oh, much, so, Steve, for oh, joining us. I hope I've been okay. I hope I didn't speak too much or too little. Oh no, it's been great. Absolutely, it's but it's been in, it's been interesting, and I'm sure our listeners will enjoy getting a bit of an insight into you know the world of an orchestrator, arranger, conductor, and all the other things that you you do. Um, and you've you know you've been with Robbie since the very very early days, and I think it's. It's lovely that you've worked on the latest album as well, and we can't wait to hear that. So um, yeah. a lot of fans are waiting to September the 9th. We're waiting for that. I think uh, I think Guy and and me are the the two long serving members, you yeah. are. the longest yeah. serving that still still work with him. Yeah. yeah, deserve a lifetime achievement award for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Uh, you know, it's been great. I've been lucky to have worked with him over that time. You know, in all seriousness, it's 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 been yeah. it's been you know really special. And you know, I've I've brought a lot of people along with me, good friends, good musicians. That you know, I'm I'm passionate about musicians working and creating work and and studio time and 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 making things go go round and round. And, and Rob's thing has been a wonderful uh, place to do that over the years as well. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Very nice to meet you both. Cheers. I shall I shall beep on my way down to Hampshire to the River Test at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Robbie Williams and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. Well, what a great interview with Steve Sidwell. What do you think about that, Liz? Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, very happy to speak to him. Lovely man. Lovely man. And with Rob from the very beginning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, into 25 now as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely very happy with uh, speak, having spoken to him. You know, such an important person in Rob's career. It's just incredible that he was able to give us the time. Yeah. And interesting because he sounds as though he has a lot of backroom jobs and a lot of you know, jobs that happen that people aren't aware of as well as the sort of on stage conducting. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he he has a variety of different things that he does by the yeah. sounds of it. So interesting to get an insight into that. Yeah. So yeah, special guests. Hopefully we'll get some more well, we as we said before, we've got some in the pipeline and um we hope to bring you a few more. Get a few different perspectives uh from people that have worked with Robbie over the years. Yeah. Hopefully. Hope you're enjoying it. Yeah. So thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed listening to us to chatting to Steve. And if you enjoyed that, to give us a rating or review. That would be appreciated on Apple or, or Spotify. Yeah. And um, make sure you share it with others and uh, subscribe to the podcast as well. And you then you won't miss out on future interviews, which hopefully will be coming soon. Definitely. Some some interesting names, more interesting names coming soon. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Robbie Williams Rewind.